in this problem, what's going on is that we have a battery over here, and then it's going to establish a current in this larger outer wire here. So after a while, there's going to be a steady current in this outer wire. And then at that moment, the switch is going to be flipped. And then what, what's going on is that there's going to be a current remaining in this smaller hoop here. And then it's going to have to maintain itself with the energy that's stored in the inductor. And as you can imagine, this current is going to steadily decrease as time goes on. So the first thing we have to do in part A is to find a formula for the current in terms of T. So first of all, recognize that after the switch is flipped, essentially we're left with a system that looks something like this. So we have a resistor, we have an inductor, and then we have current going on in this wire. So let's set up an equation for this uh, setup over here. So the inductor is going to contribute an EMF a voltage that's going to be equal to this. So as you can imagine, uh, if this uh, current decreases, this di dt is going to be negative, and it's going to contribute a positive uh, uh, EMF that's going to keep uh, trying to maintain the current in this direction, which is in accordance with our understanding of how an uh, inductor works. So this is the EMF, so you can imagine this as kind of like the battery that's contributing to the, uh, that's kind of trying to maintain the current, and then this is going to be equal to the amount uh, to the amount of voltage that's going to be decreased after crossing the resistor, so IR. So as you can see, this is actually a rather simple differential equation. So all we have to do is to integrate both sides. So we're going to integrate all the way up to some constant, uh, capital T. So from 0 to capital T. And as you can see, the left-hand side is rather simple. And then for the left-hand side, we're going to do uh, substitution. So it becomes in terms of uh, in terms of i, and in that case, the bound becomes the lower bound becomes uh, i as evaluated when t is equal to zero, all the way to i when evaluated at t equal to capital T. And for the left-hand side, the integral is rather simple. It's just natural log. Just write out the bounds equal to a negative r over lt. So once you substitute everything, you find that this is equal to this natural log over here. And then all you have to do is just erase both sides to the power of e, and then you'll get this uh, expression. So the first question is, what exactly is i0? So i0 is the initial current that we have. And so what is the initial current? The initial current is the current that we, uh, the steady current that we had. Uh, before we flip the switch, this current that was established by this battery here. And then uh, early in the book, David Griffiths actually proved the formula for the current that is uh, that will arise if you have a battery and an inductor and a resistor. And the formula is given by this. So it's in this is proven in one of the examples in the book, so I'm not going to prove this again. So using this, as you can see, as time goes on, once time is sufficiently large, this essentially becomes zero. So uh, the steady current that was initially inside this loop is equal to epsilon over r. So it becomes steady as this term becomes sufficiently small. So in that case, that means our i0 is equal to epsilon over r. And so we get our answer to part a. So this is equal to epsilon over r times e to the power of negative r over lt. So this is our answer to part a. So as you can see, the current is going to steadily decrease because this term is going to decrease as t increases. So that's our answer to part A. So for part B, we want to find the total amount of energy that's delivered to the resistor. And then we can do that by considering uh, power. So I square R is the amount of energy uh, released in the resistor per, uh, per second. And if you multiply this by dt, this is essentially the infinitesimal amount of energy that is uh, being released in, at the resistor. So all I have to do is just to integrate this to infinity. So you see that i squared becomes epsilon squared divided by r squared times e to the power of negative 2RLT. And don't forget that's an r here, so it cancels out. So dt. So integrating this is simple enough. And you flip the constants. So this goes from 0 to infinity. So when this is infinity, this is just 0. When this is equal to 0, it's just equal to 1. And we need to minus the the uh, term over here, so essentially you, get, you can get rid of the uh, negative sign. So all we're left with is L over 2R 
times 1 because the 1 comes from when you substitute a 0 inside. So suddenly there's a t here. So as you can see, once you rearrange this a bit, you'll see that the answer is equal to 1 half L times epsilon over R squared. So this is our answer to part B. So for part C, we need to check that the uh, amount of energy that was stored in the inductor is equal to this expression here, which is what you would expect. So the, after the switch is flipped, uh, the inductor is going to release the energy that it had stored here, and it's all going to be released at the resistor. And if this much energy is going to be released at the resistor, we would expect this amount of energy to be stored in the inductor initially. So for part C, we're going to use the formula. So this, is, this formula gives us the amount of energy that was stored in the inductor. So I is going to be the initial uh, current that we had, and as we found, that's equal to epsilon over R. So just substituting that in, you'll get this expression, which is, as you can easily see, exactly for this, which was what we would expect. So this is your answer to